In this video, we're going to be renovating this old wooden sled. You can see it's lost a lot of its stain and it's quite dirty and we're going to be turning it, transforming it into this. Let me show you. All right, thanks for clicking. Welcome to my channel and to this video. Today, we've got this old wooden sled. It's been following me around for years, if not a decade or more and we're going to be renovating it. You can see it's quite old. It's lost a lot of its color, and it uh, is just generally faded, and we're going to transform it for you. We're going to be putting on some linseed oil as uh, the stain or the coloring agent, and then sealing it up. Of course, we're going to take it apart, clean it up really well, and so let's begin. So we've got it up on the sawhorses here, and I'm going to take a rag and clean everything really well just to clean up all the cobwebs and everything. By the way, welcome to the channel. I do lots of home projects around the house, saving you time and money. Click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to share this with somebody. That would be really helpful. Let's grow this DIY community. Now that things are cleaned off, we're gonna actually take apart the sled using my drill and the appropriate drill bits because all these nooks and crannies that you see here we want to not only clean them and prep the surface really well, but we want to be able to apply the new stain, or in my case, the linseed oil that I'm applying to all the nooks and crannies. I could just keep it intact and then try to apply everything over it, but I suspect that in the long run that won't be wise. So I'll go ahead and take out all the screws, and we've also got these weird, weird little rivet uh, screw adhesion piece, these little pieces of metal. And so that necessitates a multi-tool to slide in there and to actually cut out some of those old pieces. And I'll be using screws to put it all back together again, since I don't have those other uh, special, more specialized rivet pieces. So I'm going to take off the slats and the little curved sled legs, I guess you could call those, whatever they're called. And we're just gonna separate everything and we're gonna keep special track of the screws because I'm working in the garage here, we don't want screws to, to become lost and end up in a, uh, in a flat tire or something on the vehicle. So with the multi-tool, I've got my metal cutting saw at the end. And by the way, I'll put links in the description below for all the supplies and tools that you need for this job and that you see in this video. Like I always do, you can check those out. So we're gonna actually cut through those, they're like heavy duty staples almost, or perhaps brad nails that were put into that. So we're just gonna sever those off and file those down so that they're nice and smooth. It's just so we can see all surfaces, sides, tops and bottoms of the, of the wood on the sled. So we've got everything taken apart now and we're gonna, again with a rag, kind of clean everything up just to make sure uh, all the large debris cobwebs, dirt, and all that is taken care of. And you can even spray some multi-purpose spray on there. We are going to be sanding this down and even putting some deglosser on as well. So let's go ahead and move on. We've got the sander here. And I'm using a multi my multi-tool with the sander attachment. I could use uh, an orbital sander, but I really like this because it's got kind of a it's kind of like a little mouse sander. It's got a pointed edge, and that's going to allow me to uh, get into some of the sides uh, a little bit in more better detail and better precision and control than the orbital sander. But I could certainly use an orbital sander for the large flat surfaces, should I choose to do that. I've got this old sticker, so I'm going to sand that off. I tried peeling it off, but it's just so old and brittle, it doesn't peel off very well. So I'm going to go ahead and sand that off, some random sticker that was put there who knows when. And for the most part, that is sanded down. We've also got stain, some stain that's still remaining on it. I need to remove most, if not all of that, with my sander. So I'll go ahead and take the time that I need to prep all of the surfaces. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect because, as you'll see in a minute, I'm going to be applying deglosser. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that momentarily. But we've got all of the wood surfaces mostly prepped now. That includes the long surfaces and, uh, and some of these uh, shorter, more curved surfaces. So here's another shot of my workstation. Kind of cool. All right, now, for, real quickly, if you're dealing with curved wood, if your sled has curved wood, 
Uh, again, you can use the multi-tool because I think it curves a little bit better. You could also take a block sander like this, uh, one with a really kind of curved, not a 90 degree, but more of a curved end. So it kind of conforms naturally to some of the contours of the wood. And pay, pay special attention to any area that has built up polyurethane or stain on it, because you just basically want to knock that down as much as possible. Now, after we've sanded, we're going to get some of that sawdust and stuff off of there, and we're going to be applying the deglosser. Now, the concept behind deglosser is that it should break down stain that's already on it. It's like, basically like liquid sanding. Uh, as I have used it before on various projects, it's pretty efficient. It basically preps your surface for uh, receiving paint or stain uh, without having to sand or remove everything. Of course, you manly want, manually want to remove as much as possible, but I'm going to go ahead and use this just as a, fa as a safe, uh, in case I miss some of, the, some of those curved or contoured edges, corners, things like that. But I'm going to go ahead and apply the deglosser to everything. And I'm wearing proper ventilation, respirate. I've got a mask on and ventilation in my workspace because you don't want to breathe in this liquid deglosser stuff. So I'll go ahead and put just one coat. You can see I'm applying it with a rag here on all surfaces that I can see, sides, tops, bottoms of the entire thing, prepping it. And then I'm going to let that dry. And pretty quickly after I let it dry, in other words, I'm not going to come back to the next stage two days later. I'm going to do this relatively quickly so as to maximize the adhesion of the next step. So we're gonna be applying this boiled uh, wood boiled linseed oil. Uh, this is the product I'm using, and then we're gonna seal it with some polyurethane, exterior grade, of course. You could read the instructions, and I advise you to do that because on the back, for example, it says, hey, you cannot take a rag or a cloth and just throw this away because the oils can naturally combust. There's apparently been lots of fires in the past from this, so you gotta be really careful and I'll show you how I get rid of and dispose of my rags. In fact, I'll make another video. You can search my channel on how I did that, but I get ahead of myself a little bit. Let's go ahead and apply this first and then I'll tell you about how I can dispose of this relatively quickly and safely. So we're gonna apply this to a rag and you could use a brush, read the instructions on your product. I'll put a link down below, of course, for this stuff and other recommendations that I use. And But I'm using a rag for the first uh, coat of this linseed oil. And then I'll use a foam brush in just a moment just to switch things up a little bit and tell you what I recommend. The rag goes on pretty quickly, pretty easily, but it is a little messier and less control. However, you can use circular motions. They advise that you go with the grain of the wood during the application process. And this stuff is really beautiful. It, it goes on clear, but pretty much instantly you can see it start to pop and darken up a little bit. In fact, over the course of several coats and days, this stuff really does darken up. And it's a really beautiful, I think, uh, application or product to apply to an old uh, wooden sled or really any furniture. Of course, you'll want to test this thoroughly before you spend a lot of time and money applying this only to find out, hey, I don't really like this or it didn't turn out as I expected. So we'll go ahead and apply this and the bottle that I have here is kind of a small bottle, but a little bit goes a long way. And I have a glove on, of course, as well, because you don't want to get this stuff on your hands. It's fine, I think. It's uh, they. Claim to be food grade. You can put this on like cooking boards and stuff. Although I've never, don't hold me to that. I'm no pro, remember? You'll need to, uh, to read up on any application and make sure that it's appropriate for your specific context. But apparently that is true. But I'm not going to lick this or prepare broccoli on it. I'll tell you that. All right, here we go. So some shots of, we've got a couple of coats on now, the all sides. And this is kind of what it looks like, and it dries relatively quickly. Of course, you'll need to make sure the temperatures are appropriate, and the back of the bottle does give the temperature recommendations. You don't want to apply this in negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be the bad news. And here it is, just kind of dry. This will give you an appreciation for the texture. And we'll put on another coat after it is all dry. And you can see I switched to the foam brush here. 
This is a little cleaner, a little simpler, although that foam brush does drink it pretty well. Let me fast forward this for you. You get the point. You don't need to stick around for all of the coats, but I ended up putting three separate coats on, and I did not sand the coats in between. I just let, let it dry and then put the subsequent coat on after that. There's another shot of the product going on. And you just kind of push it into the grain, going with the grain, like I said. And it is a really beautiful, look at the grains start to pop. Now you would have the choice of just letting it be like this. You can put one or two coats on or three coats or four coats and you can kind of stop whenever you think, hey, this looks good enough. There it is drying. After all of my coats, I'll give you some more shots so you can get an appreciation for that. You do want to wipe off the excess if there's any pooling, by the way, happening. If you put on too much, you'll want to wipe that off because that'll take longer to dry. All right, real quickly, when you're done, I mentioned earlier this stuff can combust if you just like wad up the, the rag or the towel and just kind of like throw it somewhere. That's a big no-no and could be a fire hazard. So what I did is I made sure everything was fanned out like this and that it could dry appropriately. Just kind of like that. See how it's not wadded up anywhere? And then I said, even that I'm uncomfortable with. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it into, you can see I've got this like metal water, flower watering container here. And I just filled that up with water and just put it in there because there's no way that a fire could start in metal dunked in water was the theory here. And I felt really good about that and of course had no problems. And I, so I used paper towels and rags and, and just dunked the stuff as I walked away and let it dry and came back for subsequent coats. And we're a little colder. You can see 52, the temperature starts to drop a little bit, which I think maybe affected the quality of my uh, sealing a little later. And I'll, I'll, I'll mention that in a second. But the linseed oil went on beautifully. There was a shot versus the dry versus the wet. And I'll bring it in for some better lighting so you can see what three coats of linseed oil does. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that grain just pop. I am pretty happy with that. All right, so the next stage, I'm going to be sealing it using an exterior polyurethane. Now, the temperatures were a little cold, so I really wasn't happy with how this worked. I should have been, uh, I should have warmed up or waited until warmer weather or went into a warmer working condition, but I was in my garage and it is what it is. So overall, it worked pretty well, but this stuff came on a little gel-like because of the cold temperatures. So definitely make sure you read your instruction manual on whatever polyurethane you decide. I do recommend this exterior polyurethane. It's super durable and it's got kind of an old rustic look to it once you apply it. I've used it on various products around the house for different uh, tabletop surfaces in my home and have really liked it. So anyway, you can see the difference here of just the linseed oil versus the polyurethane. And I really got to work it in here. It's also kind of an old bottle of polyurethane, but and it's a, a kind of a high gloss finish. But the idea is because I'm going to be using this or my kids are going to be using this sled outside that I have should or, or I should seal it up, right? You don't have to. You can see on the right there an unsealed. You could leave your product or your project just like that with the linseed oil without any sealant on it should you choose. But for my context and my application because this is outside Linseed oil is not a sealed product, and it's not waterproof, as I understand it. It does not block the 
water for or snow from entering into the wood. So we're going to get this thing put back together. We've got everything dried, and I had to wait 24 hours between coats for the polyurethane for it to be completely dried, and you could lightly sand in between as per the instructions uh, on the product. But we're going to get this thing put back together using screws so it's all nice and secure. The base, and now these slots right here need to go on to the top. And to do that, I'm going to make sure you can see they use these old brad nails or these old heavy-duty staples. I'm going to replicate that. I have a brad nail gun I'll be getting out here in just a minute. But let me kind of orient everything to make sure. Yeah, that's how I want. So I'm going to be putting one and one quarter inch brad nails straight down where they intersect with the base on the sled. Obviously your sled might have a different uh, configuration, but I'm going to be putting these brad nails straight down. That's going to be a very flush surface, so when the kids sit on it, they're not going to snag. In other words, it kind of countersinks into the wood. Straight down. You don't want it to be an angle. You don't want any nail protruding on the other side. That would be bad news. We'll go ahead and get two in each slot on the top and then up toward the top or on the bottom, the one end of the slot and then the top end. Whenever there's two base pieces and the, when the slot over, over intersects with those base pieces, each slot is getting a total of four brad nails. There's a better view for you. And I'm going right next to the older brad nails. Metal doesn't go into metal very well. And you could replace the screws with stainless steel screws so as to avoid rusting. All right, we've got kind of a high gloss, rustic look. The color is just gorgeous, I think. Really made that grain pop. That's what it looks like. Let's bring it into some better light. What do you think? What would you have done differently? Feel free to comment below. Overall, I'm happy with the project. Leave you with some final shots here. All right, and that is a wrap. We will stop the video there. Hopefully this has helped you out, giving you some ideas for your product and thought about that linseed oil. It's pretty cool stuff. Thanks for being with me.